tonight on Access TV. Live. Live. Get ready to laugh. Don't, don't adjust your TV. I'm this wide. With Dean Edwards, Kevin Flynn, Jay Okerson, Vanessa Hollingshead, and your host, Robert Kelly. This isn't the funniest show we've ever watched on TV. I'll blow it. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Robert Kelly. Especially you, sir. I would love to uh, bite your shoulder. Uh, I would soft kiss you, just very, not even in a rough way. <laughs> that shirt's not your size, you know that. It's, it's not, like you do need a large, but you said, fuck it, medium. Oh, I really hate thin people make me sick. I do, I hate thin guys. I, I hope you get hit by a donut truck. I, that would, that's my fantasy. After the show, you're like, it was a good show, and you're like flexing in a window, because there's a reason there, and it fucking hits you. And because of your awesome chest, it steps and flips over, and donuts fly into my mouth. Ah. And I step over your gorgeous dead body. But I wouldn't even have to lift my leg up, so you're so thin, I could just walk over regular. I like fat dudes. I like, <laughs> I don't like you. I hate you. You suck. You suck. I hope you die. I love you. I love him. You'll be fat someday. I love you. <laughs> fat people were better people. We're nicer people. We are. You don't see fat guys with guns. Give me your money. Then 20 minutes later, the cops show up. Where is he? He's right there. <laughs> he, uh, he took three naps and threw up in his mouth. And then bought a hot dog with my money at my hot dog cart. I would have gave him the hot dog. No need for the gun and the soft kiss in the ear. Big boys don't cry, shh. Dude, thin people. I hate you, because I've been, I've, been, I've been thin. I hate people who've never had a fat. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you've been that your whole life. I've been you, I, not you, I've been you. <laughs> but I've been this six times. This is my sixth fat, do you understand what I'm saying? I hate that. You go out to eat with pe oh, the people that just, just, you go out to eat and they just stop. I know you can just stop like halfway through. I'm done, I'm done. I don't get that. When there's food left and you say I'm full, that, that's like a superhero power to me. Like if I could be a superhero, but I, fuck flight and laser beam, I'd be I'm done man. That's right in the middle of the meal, I'm done. I'll see you at breakfast, and I won't finish that either. Because my brain and stomach are connected. I know when I'm full. My wife is a thin person, skinny people. She can just stop, we'll be out to eat, she'll just be like, I'm full, I'm full. And then she looks at me, aren't you full too, honey? Yeah, I've been full for 20 minutes, but the pain from my childhood still exists in my chest, so I'm gonna have dessert, finish the rest of yours, and the bread. Try to stop this, everybody dies in this restaurant, everybody. <laughs> I know I asked for your help, but fucking not tonight, bitch. Not tonight. I'm a fat so I eat it. I, you don't have to be a thousand pounds to be a fat either. Food makes me feel good. Do you ever see a heroin addict when he takes it and then he just, oh. You can do that with cake. I've done that with cake. Get an Entenmann's cake and then put it in the oven for 20 minutes. And it, oh, I can't feel my feet. I think I caught diabetes. I need, I need ham. Get me ham. <laughs> my wife can, she can have chocolates and all, cause she'll just have one, one little chocolate. Loves Hershey's Kisses, loves them. She'll have one and that's it. Hershey's Kisses, I eat them all. They're this big. It's gone. That's it. It's the pistachio of chocolate candies. She'll have one and that's it. She won't even chew it. She'll suck on it like Martha Stewart cutting a tomato. I'll have one with her after dinner. Then I wake up at three in the morning. If I find that bag, it's gone. It looks like somebody blew the Tin Man in the kitchen the next day.
young too, so you know, there's still, the younger you are, you don't care about food. Look at all you young, I look at the older people. Yeah, the older you get, the more f important food becomes. You don't, you wake up in the morning, what do you want to do? I don't know, lover, let's <laughs> run through a field naked and blow me while I fly fish a river. And let's have a Tic Tac for lunch and drink like Mardi Gras and find an alligator and fuck on the back of it because it's dangerous. The older you get, you wake up in the morning and say, like, what do you want to do? Let's get breakfast and figure out we're going for lunch so we don't get no fucking argument. How's that sound? And uh, if we're going to walk around Ikea, pack snacks, bitch, because around noon, I'll punch a baby in the neck for a fucking Swedish meatball, okay? Oh, God. I am a fatty. I just love it. I love food so much. I get mad at people like you. I just hate you. Because your life is easier than me. Look at you have like five regular people shirts on. <laughs> that makes me sick to my stomach. You understand? Like I, I, you get to button and zip shit and tie your shoe whenever you want. Just let me get that and come back up. If I have to tie my shoe, I could die. I could die. Because I have to hold my breath like I'm swimming for conch shells off the coast of Puerto Rico. You don't have fat worry. You don't. Your underwear elastic stays up in the front the way it should. It doesn't fold over and sweat shut five times and make a little baby razor elastic. And then when you take your panties off, they look, you're both your legs are purple and it looks like somebody tried to saw you in half like a, like a magic trick gone bad. You can wear boxer shorts and a hot ball at Christmas. Your asshole doesn't try to eat them with every, with every step. <laughs> Honey. Wait up. Slow down. Honey, they're gone. They're my underwear. I don't know. I said wait, and you didn't. I gotta go home. I think they're in my body again. Yeah, you, you, you've never used bread as a napkin at a buffet in Vegas. Never drop something. Do I need that? I don't know if I need that, honey. If you want the baby, pick it up. I love it, but I'll leave it because it's true. You never woke up at a Target parking lot two hours later and your shoes and wife were gone and some fat son of a bitch wrote fat to a crush at tits with a sharpie. I woke up. Listen, I got caught eating cookies in the shower. <laughs> Do you understand? That's a true, that's not a joke. That happened. I'm 42. She didn't give me cookies. I stole them at two in the morning, got naked and went into the shower. She wiped the fog back and went, are you eating cookies? I was crying like that Indian, the garbage commercial, just one tear. I, like, I wanted a cookie. Like, this is what bugs me though. Like you bug me more than him. Cause you're just thin. You made that shit. You didn't make that. That's just you. Yeah, you've been, yeah, if you, in clothes, you beat me. You win. If you're wearing, it naked though, you're fucked up too, you know what I mean? <laughs> like if we were both naked, she wouldn't immediately pick you. She'd be like, oh shit, this is harder than I thought, damn. <laughs> Going with that fat dude or that little Filipino girl I'm apparently dating. What is up with that shovel ass? I got caught looking at a guy like you. In the, in, we were in the gym, he got naked, and I was staring right at his stomach. Not in a gay way. 80-20, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, he was gorgeous. <laughs> Freak, he had ab on top of ab, on top of ab, on top of ab, and then another ab, and then he had a tattoo of a dragon fighting an eagle over an apple above his dick, and a mermaid coming out of his asshole with a protein shake he's sponsored by, and then the, the V dick ab. What the fuck is that ab? Why do you need the V dick ab? A woman like, where's your dick? I have an ab to show you, young lady. Follow these abs to the V that points to the tip of my cock. It showcases my penis like a statue. Enjoy, lava. <laughs> if I want to show a girl my penis, I have to pick this up and point to it with a keychain flashlight. You see it? Looks like somebody spit bubblegum into an afro. Do you see it now? You guys are great. We're going to have a great night. Are you ready?
We'll be right back to start this show. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Kevin Flynn is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right. We are back. We're back. Are you guys ready to get this thing going? You know him from me, myself, and Irene. And he's also been on Sex in the City. Let's give it up for Kevin Flynn, everybody. Kevin Flynn. I'm Kelly. Yeah. Robert Kelly. And those are my credits. He gave you my credits, and they're pretty good credits. And then I walk up here, and you're like, I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> I don't know who you are either, so we're even. Uh, Robert Kelly, now Kevin Flynn. This is the Irish Catholic portion of the show. That's, what, that's a shout out. Comics always give a shout out when they come up on stage. Right? Like, y if you'll notice that, like, the black comics will come up and be like, We're the brothers in the house. And all the brothers are like, Brothers, woo, 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 woo. Latino comics come up, they're like, what are Latinos in the house? Latinos are like, Latinos, eh, re. I, I can never do that, you know? I can never walk up on stage and be like, we're all the white people in the house. <laughs> all the white people would be like, shut up. <laughs> we're all the white people, and what is this, a clan meeting? Relax. <laughs> it's America, though. We're everything, right? That's the beauty of America. Actually, Coach, a soccer team here in the city, a volunteer for a soccer team, young kids, uh, 24 students, right, on this team. Soccer player? Yeah. Hey, Robert shit on you enough, I'll leave you alone. Uh, so I have 24 kids on the team, right, and I try to memorize all their names, which is difficult, but I have all of them down except for two kids. And the problem is, both of the kids happen to be Asian, right, so I'm calling the wrong Asian kid the wrong Asian name. And the harder I try, the more I screw it up, you know, and vice versa, I keep, and it's horrible. And so I feel like I'm doing some sort of racist thing. So finally I did it again. And so I said to my assistant coach, Ellis, who's black, I said, Ellis, I just did it again. I called the wrong Asi Asian kid the wrong Asian name. And I feel horrible about it. And he looked at me and he said, uh, hey look man, I'm not Ellis. I was like, oh wow, all right. <laughs> I gotta work on that. But it's, but it's hard to follow soccer in the U.S., isn't it? That the best way to follow soccer here in the States is to talk to your cab driver. It's the truth. I always get in a cab, and I look at the guy's name, and I start to talk soccer with wherever he's from. Right? And it's always like a great conversation. You get in a cab with like some guy. He's like, he's like I'm from Bulgaria. I am a chemical engineer and a concert pianist. It's like, wow. God, Bulgarians get up early. Man. So I get in the cab about, what is it, two or three weeks ago here in New York City. It's snowing out, right? And I get in the cab, I look at the guy's name, last name first, first name last, God's honest truth. His name is Fofana Banna. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. So I did the same thing any one of you would have done. I look at him in the rear view mirror and I go, hey, Banna, Banna, Fofana, Fana, Banna. Right? He looks at me and goes, why does everyone sing me that song? Well, Banna, nobody told you? So that's, that's like having the name Happy Birthday, you know? <laughs> and you're walking around at Bendigan's. Why is everybody singing my name? This is weird. <laughs> so I'm with Banna, right? We, in the cab, we start to talk. Oh, Mike Moore. All right, so I'm with Banna, we start to talk, right? And um, he's telling me that he's been in this country for two weeks, driving a cab around New York City. First of all, I'm thinking, this is great. I'm the grandchild of immigrants, you know, it's an immigrant story. And then I'm thinking, oh my God, it's the first time Banna's ever seen snow. <laughs> right? And as soon as I think that, the cab goes <laughs> Banna's screaming, he's like, oh my God. I'm in the back, I'm like, you want to turn the meter off, Banna? Oh my God. 36 bucks, we've gone two blocks. It's a so the cab spins, does a huge spin, slams up against the curb, stalls. Banna goes, I know drive. I go, Ben, I have to go to another show. He goes, no, I no drive. I go, please, I, I've, got, I've got to go to a show. He goes, no. I go, Ben, I'll drive. <laughs> ben goes, okay. 
This is the truth here in New York City. So I get in the driver's seat, right? And, the, and he gets in the back. And we, off we go to the show. And we're driving and we're talking and Bannon's telling me about his life. You know, I'm talking to him. And, and his life is like, he escaped famine and civil war. And I'm like, just trying to keep up. I'm like, um, I went to Catholic school. I, uh, I was in the taxi thing, but that was a couple minutes ago. Uh, that's all I got, Banna. Uh, so we pull up to the curb, to the place I'm going, right? And all my friends are out in the front of the club. You know, they're all out there. I get out of the driver's seat. Banna gets out of the back. I pay him. My friends are watching. They're like, what the hell was that? I go, that's America, my friends. That's what that is. So Banner, his big thing was he was talking about football, American football. He'd seen two football games, and he didn't understand it. So imagine watching a football game for the first time, not knowing the rules or anything. He's like, I don't get it. I don't like that game. I don't get it. I'm like, what don't you get? He goes, I don't get it. I don't like it. I go, well, tell me. What don't you get? He goes, okay, this is what I see. And he starts to explain American football. He goes, this is what they see. I see a bunch of big, huge guys, right? <laughs> Standing around in a circle, looking at each other, going, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Then these guys come up with this big secret plan, right? And then these big huge guys, they walk up slowly, make two big lines, and then one guy takes the ball and runs right into the pile. I'm like, that's the best you could come up with? That was your big secret plan? Then they slowly walk back to the circle, look at each other and go, okay, that didn't work, what do you want to do? It's <laughs> a good point, Banner. Uh, and we, we talked about our kids. I, I have a little, I have my daughter, I have, and he has a boy and a girl, so Banner, we're buddies now, Banner and I. I have a, go, a little girl, which is wonderful, and uh, I, I've loved that. Having a daughter is just amazing, because my daughter would come down the stairs every morning, she'd be like, my daddy's home, it's daddy, it's my daddy. And I'd be like, yes, daddy is home. <laughs> so, and I see my buddies who have boys, totally different vibe, you know? Fathers who have boys, because little boys walk down the stairs every morning, look at their fathers, and they're like, I think I can take them. <laughs> Not today, definitely tomorrow, man. <laughs> So I have my daughter there now, it's unbelievable. Because she's like, she just vents all the time. She's 13 now, so it's different. She's like walking back from school with me and she's like, well, you know, Danny stepped on my knapsack and Madison copies my homework and my teacher said this and I'm just trying to be your dad. I'm like, well, you know, you tell Danny that's inappropriate and it's not gonna help Madison to copy your homework and when your teacher talks to you, you have to look at her and give her an answer. Finally, my daughter's like, dad, I don't want you to solve my problems. I just want you to know what I'm feeling. <laughs> oh my God, I'm married again. I can't believe it. I She's like, Dad, sometimes I swear, you don't know the difference between empathy and sympathy. I'm like, well, I will when I Google it. And then I'm like, <laughs> I want her three because there's nothing cuter in the world than a three-year-old little girl. They're just these great little citizens, you know? Remember her third birthday, they're all here and they're like, they're walking, they're like talking and communicating. They're all like walking up to me. They're like, can I have some juice, please, Caitlin's dad? Can I have a napkin, please, Caitlin's dad? Thank you, Caitlin's dad. I'm like, oh. So cute. Same party, three-year-old little boys walking around. Diapers on, fully loaded. <laughs> Hand on their pee-pee the entire time. They're like. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I don't need the juice. Hey, Abby Kevin Flynn, thank you very much. Enjoy the show, everybody, thank you. for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Vanessa Hollingshead is taking the stage when we return. Access TV, Gotham Comedy Live. For you guys at home, New York, I'm here at Gotham all weekend, Friday and Saturday. Come see me do my thing. Are you guys ready to get this going? Let's keep it going right now. You've seen her. You've seen her on Comedy Central, Showtime. Give it up for Vanessa Hollingshead, everybody. Vanessa Hollingshead. Thanks, everybody. Hi, how are you? 
my God. You guys are awesome. Great hair day, even though it's freezing cold. It's like my hair looks great, right? I don't care. And, uh, and it's a great time to get drunk, right, with the cold? I love to drink. Matter of fact, my friends have tried so many interventions with me, I just leave the plastic folding chair to set up in a semicircle in my apartment when they come over. And they're getting a little concerned. They're like, Vanessa, you're turning into a blackout drinker. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm turning into a time traveler. I mean, one minute I'm having white wine spritzes with you, the next minute I'm in Australia expla explaining to the customs official why I have no underwear on and no passport. <laughs> but sometimes you gotta drink, right? Sometimes life gets to you. Right, anyone drink on the job, throw a couple back? Anyone have a job? The way I see it is if Ernest Hemingway could write Old Man to See completely shit-faced, surely he could check your boss's email with a light buzz on. <laughs> Right? It's just degrees. I mean, if you're one of these violent types, don't drink on the job. If you're one of these sad saps, don't drink red wine. <laughs> anyway, a couple tips for those of us who like to juice on the job so you don't lose your job. If you think you're slurring a little, you're slurring a lot, right? <laughs> and if you think you're slurring a lot, you're not even speaking English. <laughs> Did you ever blast the same song at 3 a.m. over and over and over again, thinking the neighbors won't mind because it's such a kick-ass fucking song? I'm like, come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me, lad. <laughs> Luckily, when the cops showed up, they liked sticks, too. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna sail away right over to the 32nd precinct, sweetheart, and you can take your CD with you. Now, I wasn't always like that. I used to have a glass of wine with dinner after my husband left me bottle of wine for breakfast. <laughs> like, I'm all out of fruit juice. It's fruit and juice. It's just been through more stages. <laughs> my friends are like, Vanessa, you're turning into an alcoholic. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm turning into a French woman. Yeah. Right? They put it away. They like, you yeah, for breakfast, have the two bottles of wine, we oui, oui. <laughs> And then for lunch, I have a four pack of cigarettes. I don't want to get fat. And then for dinner, I have the baguette and soak up the wine so don't throw up over my clothes. <laughs> and for dinner, I have the baguette so I don't want to, to, you know, I have to look nice. So put the jean on and the dress over the jean and the jacket over the dress. And voila, coat of fashion. La, 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 la. look my friends are you know that's the new look that's the dress and the jeans over the dress I mean who dresses like that homeless people alcoholics <laughs> they don't need a box they need an accent makes 250 references in the Bible for red wine not one for orange juice I read it <laughs> Jesus turned the water into wine he didn't turn the wine into water I think he'd been crucified a little bit earlier and they're already pissed off at him <laughs> My friends are like, you're not Jesus. I'm like, I can drink like him. Maybe I'll get a vision. Oh. Maybe he'll go, Vanessa, my child, I want you to walk amongst the lepers. And I'll be like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to move to Staten Island. Oh. Now, I have friends in Staten Island. They're just my MySpace friends. <laughs> now, who's on MySpace? No one. Silence. Saying around MySpace is like saying I fucked my dog, right? <laughs> Everyone's on Facebook. Even in Tom, who invented MySpace, slinked off to Facebook. <laughs> Remember there used to be two gangs that used to be the Bloods and the Crips? Now the two new gangs are like iPhone and Blackberry. T-Mobile is like the retarded cousin. You don't even talk to people on T-Mobile. Like, what did you do, crawl out from under a fucking rock with that little flip fucking thing? <laughs> Now, I got Blackberry. My friends are like, it'll revolutionize your life. I'm like, yeah, if your hands are the size of an elf and you want to spend the rest of your time looking down like that. And all the guys with the iPhone and the app, and they got an app for another app. And no wonder more men have the iPhone. They've had so much more practice, right? <laughs> and have you noticed that 
like your email is completely clogged up with ridiculous Facebook threads of people you don't even know. Like Jeannie became friends with Michael. Michael became friends with Sarah. Don sent you a ghetto snack and Dan thought your wall post was awesome. I'm so busy updating my fake Facebook friends, I don't even have time for my real friends. And, the, and if these little postage stamp fucks your, your real friends, you drink too much tonight, you think, and you, you, your car gets, you know, a flat, you think Tom T thought your wall post was awesome, you think he's gonna pick your drunk ass up? I don't even think so. And LinkedIn, I'm like, link me the fuck out, I just figured out Facebook. <laughs> and then everyone's Twittering, do you tweet? Do you tweet, did you tweet today? I'm like, I'm like, would someone shoot that bird? I'm an animal lover. <laughs> and what's a retweet? What's a hashtag? Will it get me high? Will it help me forget about my life? <laughs> I can't even afford a rent in my apartment, but let me see how Kim Kardashian do is in 140 characters or less. And they keep saying that Americans have ADD. We don't have ADD. We are on information overload. Do you ever feel like there's too much information you're being bombarded with? You got hype, you got Skype, you got Ping, you got Pong, you got Hulu, you got Roku, you got ticker tape going on on news shows. You got news shows with three separate categories. Then you got little, a little man with a circle, the next fucking thing that's going on. Then you got little people with other shows with little extra, but they should legalize methamphetamine so we can keep up with all the fucking information that we got on floor. show, Breaking Bad, all about meth labs. <laughs> you know, my friend said, she goes, I, she goes, I blogged you, I, I texted you, I emailed you, I Twittered you, where are you? I'm like, why did you pick up the phone and fucking call me? <laughs> We've got so many social apps and we're becoming anti-social. This really happened. My friend said she went to the library. I'm like, you went to the library? What, you get a book? What are you reading? You Google that shit. When they turn your lights off, are you on public assistance? Google that fucking shit. You remember when Google first came out? Used to like, I used to like look up cheap, ho cheap hotels in Europe. You ever get sucked into like the Google vortex? I've, like, I've lost like six hours of my life, like no good jokes involved. You can actually Google a satellite photograph of your own address. I Googled my own address. There I was, naked, chain smoking, <laughs> eating ice cream. Like the Google was looking in at me. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen through evolution? Because you, we're humans, we're gonna keep absorbing all the information and our brain is gonna keep getting bigger through technology and then our eyes are gonna get really huge because cell phones are gonna keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> And then our fingers are gonna get really long so we can update our Facebook page and our wall post. And then our, our bodies are gonna get really skinny. And we're gonna, gonna become a double zero. That's a new size, thank you, LA. So we're gonna have the big head, the huge eyes, the long fingers, the skinny fucking body. We're turning into aliens, it's happening. We're all gonna start looking like E.T. and even that little alien fuck phoned home. He did. <laughs> you guys have been awesome, thank you. Thank you. to be live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jay Okerson is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. This is TV. Gotham Comedy Live. We're back. Are you guys ready for more? Is this amazing or what? Let's bring up this next comedian. He's a good friend of mine. He has a podcast called Legion of Skanks. You've seen him on Comedy Central. Keep it going. Jay Okerson, everybody. Give it up for Jay Okerson. Yeah. What up? All right. All right, pipe down. So, I have a 10-year-old daughter because there is no God, or if there is, he's hilarious. <laughs> I hate it. I hate having a daughter. I wish she was a boy. I don't care what you think. I hate it. She does uncomfortable shit often, and it makes my world very difficult. I was folding her laundry a few months ago, which will never happen again. 
as I'm folding her tiny little girl underwear, which is already making me uncomfortable. <laughs> I know it's my daughter, but still like, yeah. I noticed there's humongous holes in her underwear, and now I gotta look into that and see what the answer for humongous holes in my daughter's underwear are. And the answer was pretty upsetting. She's 10 years old, so she goes to the bathroom by herself. I guess sometimes she doesn't wipe that great. Little shit stain in her underwear. But instead of throwing the underwear out, she cuts the shit stain out with scissors <laughs> because she's embarrassed of a shit stain. But she's not embarrassed to walk around and crotch those panties. So what's up, Dad? We got any snacks? Oh, this? I'm just letting it breathe, man. I've been in pants all day. You know that. And for weeks in the garbage, I've been seeing little shit-covered Hannah Montana faces and shitty Tinkerbells. I just thought she was doing voodoo or something. Well, there it is. My cleanest joke. It's the only one I got. What are you applauding for? Your animals, don't. I was told some of my stuff's actually too dirty for even uncensored TV, which kind of bummed me out. It bummed me out, but you know what? I get it. I actually try to write clean material. If you know me at all, I try, but I'm not good at it. Like, I know you need to do clean stuff if you want to be on network TV, and I've actually tried to put pen to paper and write clean jokes, but I don't know if something fucked up happened to me when I was younger or something, but my mind goes in a bad direction, even if my intentions to write a clean joke were there. Like, I'm gonna tell, not even a full joke. I'm just gonna tell you how a joke of mine ends. And then I'm just gonna tell you the first line and you'll see how noble my intentions were to write something clean. And then just where it goes to. Somehow. The joke ends with me jerking off several guys in a row. I know. I know that shouldn't be said to people, but that's what happened. There's a circle of dicks around me and People are just yelling out times, three o'clock, and I'm hitting it, and then <laughs> nine, a 12, a 6.30, which is hard to pull off. <laughs> Jerking off dudes left and right. That's how it ends. Here's how the joke started. People, I always wanted to learn karate. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. I somehow six degrees of Kevin Bacon it to that. <laughs> and I know you saw that motion of masturbating another guy. And if your question is, is that how I would do it? The answer is yes. <laughs> the reason is, if my back's ever against the wall, and fellas, take this advice. You gotta jerk off a dude, you're gonna wanna do it like that. Because if you do it like this, it's very gay. If, if you do it like this, it's all the intention of the motion. Like this is a very, like you're putting cocks away. Like get that out of here, you're gay. What are you doing? But, but if you do it like this, it's like you're pulling them to like get those dicks near my face where they belong. <laughs> I have nothing clean. I'll try, here's what I'll do. I'll tell you one last story. This isn't so much dirty, this is more heartwarming. <laughs> it's a story about friendship. That should be good. My best friend's name uh, is Dave. And this is a story about me and Dave's friendship. It happened about, fuck, three years ago now. Dave's at my house one night, it's 2.30 in the morning. He's crashing for the night. It's a Monday night, 2.30 a.m. We had just smoked weed and had an hour-long conversation about how Africa by Toto is the greatest song ever made. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's hard to deny. <laughs> We're gonna call it a night, just then. We get a phone call from our friend Lewis, our Puerto Rican friend who lives around the corner. And he goes, hey guys, come over here and look through my window. I'm getting ready to fuck this Asian chick. It's gonna be awesome. And it's 2.30 in the morning on a Monday, and I'm just like, dude, we will be there in five minutes. Yes. <laughs> it's a baseball throw from my home. I have to go. <laughs> so me and Dave walk over. We're watching Lewis bang this Asian chick, and it's hilarious, because she doesn't know we're watching. So Lewis is, like, flexing and posing. 
We're air high five and we're air guitaring. We're having a lot of fun. But here's where it gets weird. At one point, this Asian girl's on all fours. Her ass is facing the window, me and Dave. She's sucking Lewis's dick. He's on his knees. He's looking at us. We're looking at him. We're all giggling. <laughs> now, Lewis is the proud owner of a small dog, Jack Russell Terrier. And before you panic, this is going exactly where you think it's going. The dog jumps up on the bed from behind. True story. So I was licking her Asian vagina. I swear to God. I know. I know. Eating her pussy. You don't have to laugh. I know it's live TV. That's not a punchline. I'm just giving you the facts of the story. Dog started eating her Asian pussy. I know. When you hear that, you don't think laughter. No one does. I've told this story all over the globe. No one laughs at that. When you hear that story, everyone pretty much thinks the same thing. A dog eating an Asian, the irony alone is fucking mind blowing. <laughs> That's the punchline. You guys have been a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Dean Edwards is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Ten more minutes. Yes, we're back. Are you guys ready for more Gotham Comedy Live? I am. Let's give it up. You know him from SNL. He's on Guide Code on MTV. Give it up for Dean Edwards, everybody. Dean Edwards. What's up? Clap it up, man. Y'all doing all right, all right. What up? What's going on, man? In a good mood. Feeling good right now, man. She was New Year. Just, I just celebrated. I've been with my wife 18 years, man. Been with my lady. Eight. Y'all clapping. I didn't say I'm enjoying it. I just said I survived it. But here's, you know what's interesting? When you're with somebody for a long period of time, you start realizing all the little things they do to start to get on your nerves. The little, like my wife is a Brit. She's English, you know, so she has that accent. And don't boo, it was sexy when we first met. All right, now it's starting to get on my nerves. And I can say that because she's not here, right? <laughs> No, because everything she says to me has this sort of condescending tone to it. Every, I always feel like the only American in an episode of Downton Abbey, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> everything she says ends in, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> And I can't escape it. Even when she sleeps, it's <laughs> <laughs> And just to clarify, she's English, but she, she, she's black. She's African-American, or not African-American, she's British. <laughs> No, you know what I mean? And the reason I say that, A, is because black women are present. As soon as you say, my wife's English, you get that, mm-hmm. I'm like, no, they, they have us over there too, you know? <laughs> Back in the days, everybody did a little recruiting from Africa, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's with her parents are West Indian, they're Jamaican men, so she has two accents, and it's exotic at times, but sometimes it's irritating. Like, when we argue, argue with her is like arguing with a schizophrenic, you know? Cause, Cause she doesn't warn you, she just goes and you don't listen to me or pay attention. I really get sick and tired, Tristan. Me no boom a clan, you can't keep this respect in the middle. Hey, hey, oh, okay, hold on. Time, time out. Well, mate, why don't y'all make up your mind who's gonna yell at me tonight, will you? But you know what the hang-up is? Uh, it's, it's really on me, because I'm American and she's English. And maturity has taught me that, you know what? Americans, we trip on English people because they, they sound smart. They sounded, be honest with you. You ever met someone in English, they start speaking, you feel a little dumber about your life? Or you feel a little remedial, they're like, hello, you're like, no, 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 I'm not gonna do it, I don't know. And for me, it's awkward, because my wife actually is smart, man. She's a professor of literature, you know? She got three degrees, she's got a bachelor's, master's, doctorate. She, she got tenured two years ago, and I was proud once I Googled tenure to learn what it meant. 
Cause she came over, paper about 10 years. I was like, that, let me just look it up real quick. And then when I looked it up, I was like, that's awesome. We have a job for life. She's like, what, what do you mean we? I said, let me explain something. When you got a doctorate, we got a doctorate, all right? <laughs> and if we share taxes, we share tenure, you know? <laughs> but it's necessary cause she has three degrees, man. I, I got jokes. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You know how dumb I feel in my house? I, I graduated from community college with an associate's degree. And let's be real, the only reason they call it an associate's degree is because you are associated with the college, not because it counts, all right? <laughs> and a, an associate's degree is like a receipt that you were in the building a couple of times. <laughs> you, you will never go on a job interview with an associate's degree. Like, you have an associate's, we've been waiting for someone with your qualification. <laughs> and now for some odd reason, both of our daughters, we have an eight-year-old and 11-year-old, they both have started speaking with mommy's little irritating accent. <laughs> so now it's three of them in the house versus me. I feel like I'm being colonized in my living room every night. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Do, do you realize how annoying it is to have a little eight-year-old look up to you and talk down to you at the same time? <laughs> Judging, oh, daddy. Daddy, did you graduate from community college? <laughs> You're such a dummy! I can't even listen to the music I want to listen to. Because I love rap. As soon as I put on any rap in my house, stop playing that hip hop. <laughs> stop playing that rap music. It's full of hatred towards women and misogynistic lyrics. Full of hatred and misogynistic. That's the eight year old yelling at daddy, right? <laughs> But I do, I love rap, man, and I love, I love music in general, but I know I'm getting older because I'm starting to judge music instead of just enjoying it. That's when you know, because once Michael Jackson died, it was ball game. That's when like, the, the floodgates were open, man. Because I, 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 I cried when Michael died. I'm not ashamed. I said, he gave us 40 years, I can give him a couple tears. <laughs> and I didn't even cry the day he died, it was the day after, because every radio station was playing MJ's greatest hits, you know what I mean? Even Rush Limbo was running Thriller, dog, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I was on the West Side Highway in Manhattan, man, going back to Brooklyn, and I was all, I'm in the, and then they played that, never can say, and I was like, oh. Mm, ah. <laughs> and, and fellas, if you ever feel like crying, let the tears out, because you look like a fool trying. You ever seen a man try to not cry when he wants to? You like, ah, 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 ah. you look like the thrill of it, or get away. <laughs> And I was full, I was like, I can't, he, he ain't never gonna be, he, he died. And, and I looked out of the corner of my eye, there was a dude in a yellow Hummer looking at me like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> And then I tried to get my composure, and he was like, hey, roll your window down. I was like, hi, hi, hi. But in my mind, I'm like, damn, this dude's about to call me a little punk. You little punk, what you sitting there crying for, little sissy? This dude looked at me and said, I'm listening to the same station, man. <laughs> Why, Michael, why? Why not Tito? Because honestly, like, music-wise, you don't have to be the best singer, you don't have to be the best rapper. Now it's all about just, you know, what you're selling. Like, just be redundant. If you want to be a singer, just repeat yourself enough. It becomes infectious. Think about how many times you've heard a song you can't stand, but you've heard it a thousand times. Next, next thing you know, you sitting at home. Abrella, Ella, eh, 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 Abrella, Ella, eh, 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 eh,
Y'all didn't know black people like yodeling, did you? But yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that song remind you that one game on The Price is Right, which was like, yo, 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 yo. Yo, I'm thinking that was y'all been cool, man. I appreciate your time. Stay up, follow me on Twitter. I am Dean Edwards. Y'all been love. Two fingers. Shout out to Brooklyn. Brooklyn, we did it again. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. Here More left happening right now. This is it. Well, we got it right here. That's our show. Access TV. Gotham Comedy Live. Let's bring up our bring up with Vanessa, Kevin, Big J, Dean. Give it up for your stars of the show. Give it up for me, your host, Robert Kelly. RobertKellyLive.com. Look me up, bitches.